Hi, my name is Cameron Winters, coming to you today on behalf of my friends at Gig Performer. Today, we're going to be going over the very basics of AVB and how you can use it to connect two separate Gig Performer rigs together. Let's get right into it. So what is AVB? AVB is an Ethernet protocol which can do many things. Of most interest to us today is its ability to transmit multiple streams of digital audio bidirectionally at a very low latency over a single Ethernet cable. So here in our studio with my drummer Tim, with just a single Ethernet cable and a special mix of AVB aggregate devices, which we'll get into in a bit, and Gig Performer, both of us can now hear each other's rigs in real time and process our own in-ear mixes. And that's just how we use it, and it's not even scratching the surface of its capability. So, how do we implement this? For our example, you're going to need two Mac computers, uh, fairly modern ones, either with a Thunderbolt 2 port or a Thunderbolt 3 port on them. Um, if you have a Thunderbolt 3 one, you're going to need one of these dongles. You're going to need a Thunderbolt 3 to a Thunderbolt 2 adapter uh, from Apple. And you're also going to need this uh, Thunderbolt 2 to Ethernet uh, dongle, also from Apple. Uh, there's a long technical reason as to why we need these specific ones, but all you need to know is we need our magic AVB dongles. And uh, the only other thing we're going to need is a compatible Ethernet cable. Uh, that's just going to be any Cat5e cable that can achieve gigabit speed. Um, the longer you run, the more you may want to think about getting a higher quality cable. Now, let's connect them together. Uh, first, we're going to take our Thunderbolt 3 and 2 adapter, if applicable, and we're going to connect our Thunderbolt 2 dongle to it. We're then going to take our Ethernet cable, and we're going to plug that in to our Ethernet jack. So now we got these two dongles together and an Ethernet cable, and we're going to go ahead and do that on our other computer as well. Now that our two computers are hooked up to each other via the Ethernet cable, let's dive into macOS and get these two talking to each other. So on one of our Macs, let's go ahead and go to our Applications folder, and we're going to go to our Utilities, and we're going to select Audio MIDI Setup. And from here, we're going to go to Window, and we're going to go to Show Network Device Browser. And in here, there's a little button up here. It's labeled ABB Configuration Utility. That's going to be where you want to go. Uh, just a quick side note, so in not too much older versions of macOS, uh, this button isn't there. So in the description below, I'm um, include a terminal command that will just open up this app for you. Um, I know it's kind of a long workaround, but uh, it's going to apply to a lot of you. And um, some of this app's going to look a lot different too, but everything's going to be named the same and all the concepts are the same, so you should be able to figure it out. Anyway. Uh, from the ABB configuration, we're going to go to Window once again, and we're going to select the ATD ECC controller. And here we're going to scroll down on the left side to our Thunderbolt Ethernet. This is the dongle that we just connected. And under Virtual Entity, we're going to check this little box, Built-in built Virtual Audio Entity. And it might not look like it, but we just made an EVB device. Uh, real quick, while we're in here, we're going to change a couple settings just to get it working for our needs. Uh, we're going to hit the drop down next to Thunderbolt Ethernet, and we're also going to hit the drop down next to Apple Inc. And we're going to go ahead and select your computer. So in this case, this is our MacBook Pro. And under current configuration, we're going to want to select 32 in, 32 out, 16 channel stream. Um, if you dive in deeper into AVB a little bit, uh, this is a setting you might want to change for compatibility. Uh, but for now, this is going to just get us started. And we're going to want to scroll down to our sampling rate. This is our next setting that's really important. Um, you're going to want to use whatever your standard sampling rate is. Uh, here in our studio, we like to use 88.2. Uh, most of you are probably going to be using 44.1, but you're going to choose your sample right there. And you're going to want to go to Audio Stream Input 1. And under Stream Format, we're going to select AAF PCM, and we're going to select the matching option with your, uh, your chosen sample rate. So just pick the same AAF option that has your sample rate, and we're going to do that for all the options here. And once we're done, uh, you are good to go. All right, so now like a little bit like a cooking show, I've already kind of prepped a lot of this. So I'm going to go ahead and disable this particular laptop. You're going to want to go ahead and jump onto your other laptop now, and we're going to go to that Network Device Browser tab. And once you're in there on your other computer, you should see the name of your computer that you set the AVB up on. 
And to set this AVB connection and get these two officially talking to each other, I'm going to just click this little checkbox, and now they are connected via AVB. So if we go back to our audio devices, we'll see something pretty interesting. We're going to see that laptop. So it knows the laptop's there, and it thinks it's a 32 in and a 32 out uh, audio interface. That's uh, a little interesting, right? Uh, how can a laptop be an uh, audio interface? What exactly does that mean? Well, now that these two computers are connected, on this laptop, if I were to output some audio to channels, let's say one and two, the other laptop, that MacBook Air, it's going to see that audio on inputs one and two. So I think you can see how we can start to do some kind of cool stuff with this. There's something we can do to make this a little bit more useful though. So it's a fun little party trick that we can send, you know, you know, on my Spotify playback to another computer. But how can we actually use this with Gig Performer? Uh, first, we're going to create something called an aggregate device. And now, aggregate device in Mac OS, they're very powerful. They allow you to combine multiple audio interfaces into one big virtual audio interface. Uh, to make an aggregate device, it's uh, very simple. We're going to go to our audio device uh, setup here. And we're going to click this little plus button at the bottom, and we're going to hit Create Aggregate Device. It's really that easy. And I'm going to go ahead and select uh, the interface that I use right here in the studio. Uh, it's just labeled audio out. Um, it's a four input um, interface, allows me to plug my guitar in here. And I'm also going to select the uh, AVB device, uh, your laptop here. And you'll see that I made a big audio device that has our four inputs here and also the 32 virtual inputs. And same thing here, we have our four outputs. Those are our real physical outputs. And here's our 32 virtual outputs. Now you may be getting ahead of me, but don't worry if you're not, I'm gonna explain what all this uh, does for you. Uh, and just real quick while we're in here, we're gonna wanna change our clock source. We're gonna change this to the AVB device. And we're also gonna wanna change our sample rate to our previously chosen sample rate, in our case, 88.2. Now that we have our aggregate device set up on here, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do the exact same thing on our other laptop. And once that's done, uh, it's finally time to jump into Gig Performer. So here on my main laptop, I have just a very basic Gig Performer rig. Here I have my four input uh, physical audio interface that's sitting right next to me. And I have the input of that coming into a guitar plugin. And then I have the stereo out going to outputs one and two, which are my monitors. So here we can hear that beautiful noise. Um, you know, very basic, but how can we incorporate AVB into this? Well, we're gonna go to options and we're gonna go to our audio setup and we're gonna select our new aggregate device here. And so we'll see, I can see many different inputs. And just a quick tip for Gig Performer, if you hold shift and click one of these options, it will check or uncheck every single option. So it saves you having to click 34 times. And we're gonna go ahead and set our output device as our aggregate device as well. And again, we're gonna wanna check every single one. We're gonna choose our chosen sample rate and we're gonna hit apply settings. And now let's see what we're dealing with. Well, now our interface is so big, I gotta drag it back on the screen here. And here we can see I still have my signal. My guitar is still working uh, because it is going to the outputs of my interface, which is uh, outputs one and two. We can see that in our aggregate device here. We can see our outputs, our first four, are attributed to our uh, physical audio device. But what happens if I take this signal and I send it to channels one and two of our aggregate device? So now if I look in here, I'll see the signals being split up twice now. And thanks to the magic of editing, if I jump over to our other computer, just so you can see there's no trickery, you can see our signal coming in on the other laptop. How cool is that? So, I mean, that's a very basic uh, example of it. Um, I'll give you a quick example of something a little more complicated with uh, our band Vesser, me and my drummer Tim O'Neill. Uh, I took a quick little video clip just to show you my rig running. So uh, this is how we use it in the studio. I have my Gig Performer rig, which is a little elaborate. Uh, you can check out my interview links below with Gig Performer. 
Um, it has a bunch of virtual synth, it has guitar, it has bass, there's a lot going on. And Tim has a lot going on too. He has eight drum mics he's processing, and he has his sample pads, and he has his synthesizers all running in his gig performer rig on his laptop. And between them is just a single ethernet cable, and we're able to hear each other's mixes, and we're able to adjust our own in-ear mix without affecting the other person, and it all happens in real time. Here, I'll cut to that clip now. All right, so here you can see I am opening up my synthesizer, and I'm getting it started here. So this synthesizer is running on my computer, and we can see it running there. And if we pan over to Tim, we can see that he also can hear the synthesizer, and he's able to play along to it in real time, even though it's a very time-specific kind of little synth groove there. He's able to play to it in real time. And if we take a look at his gig performer rig, we can see his drum channel there, but we can also see my synth channel. He has independent control over uh, just my synth. He's not controlling my whole mix. He's controlling just my synth. So he has control over my guitar, my synth, my bass, and he control it to his needs without affecting me at all. And vice versa, if we go over to my computer here, I can see I have his drums that are being processed by the interface connected to his computer. And I can turn it up and down as you see, and he can still play along, doesn't affect him at all. Uh, yeah, you know, AVB is very powerful. We wouldn't be able to do what we do in Besser if it wasn't for AVB or Gig Performer. And now is as good a time as any for the question today, and not just because I forgot to do it earlier. How would you use AVB? Uh, now that you see kind of the basics and how we personally use it, uh, how can you use it? How would this benefit your band or your project? Leave a comment down below. And if you haven't tried Gig Performer yet, uh, in the link in the description, you can get a 14 free day trial or even a free 14 day trial, whichever one. <laughs>